1977 was a pretty epic year for movies. Steven Spielberg and John Williams came together to create Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and John Williams' score for the film was nominated for an Oscar, but he lost. Cue a bunch of people starting to type their comments down below. He lost to John Williams for Star Wars. And both of these movies involve space and aliens, but in completely different ways, and their scores reflect that. Now, while Star Wars is obviously one of John Williams' most iconic works, I've always thought that the Close Encounters theme is uniquely one of John Williams' greatest works of all time. This theme, this score, has a, a sophistication to it, a, a complexity to it, that is so unique to this film. It's something that I think really separates it from almost all of John Williams's other work. And of course, everyone probably has their own different John Williams favorite. But for me, this is one that I come back to and I'm just consistently blown away every single time. Let's check it out. This is just such a cool intro to this. And it's, I mean, it's totally fitting for the film, but this usage of just absolute cacophony, there's total harmonic ambiguity. It's just dissonance, right? Because this whole buildup to, to, to the climax of the film, the whole Devil's Tower storyline, I mean, it's, it's absolutely like nobody has any idea what's going on. It's panic, it's chaos, and that's exactly what this sounds like. Oh man, and this goes on for quite a while. But there's this reveal <laughs> of, of this five chord that is absolutely stunning. Check this out. Just more dissonance, more chaos. But then out of, out of the darkness emerges this giant chord. This, this G sus chord. <laughs> This is so cool. You have to take everything with a grain of salt because, you know, it is 1977 and uh, CGI isn't exactly how we know it today. And in a lot of cases, especially this one, animatronics was the answer here. And this is what we get. <laughs> that reveal is so cool. It's so weird. It's just so strange, right? It's almost like it's not... Is it scary? I don't even know if it is scary. That's not really what they were going for, and that's part of why the score sounds the way it does. It's because the goal was not to paint the aliens as this, this uh, barbaric, you know, evil species that's coming to Earth to destroy everything and harvest our organs and all that stuff. No, this was a story of discovery, but it is definitely undoubtedly creepy. Then we get this amazing reveal that, <laughs> that it's just like the aliens like, I have arrived, and that's where we get this chord. <laughs> and then everybody's running away for some reason. I don't really understand what this is, but yeah. The score and the visuals, they just give you this feeling of just complete wonder. You're like, what is going on? So we get more dissonance and it kind of goes to some odd places, but then all of a sudden we get the reveal of our first melodic structure. Oof. It sounds like we're in E major there, and the uh, the choir goes... I think so? Something like that. But then the change from E goes to... C major, which all that is, is... A very classic sound that we hear John Williams use all the time, especially for space-related things. This melody. Oh, and the harmonies, it's so like hidden inside a lot of different things going around. It's in B major, but rather than just like hearing the chord, we're hearing this melody in the cello. And then all around that, there's so many different sounds going on. So even if it is, this is like a B major chord to a, 
like a B augmented chord maybe? Even if those are our two sounds, all the other stuff going on in the orchestra is gonna be like, just whatever, you know, just filler, a whole bunch of filler. There's harp in there, there's Celeste in there, there's, oof. Wow, did you hear that chord? What on earth was that? I can hear all these notes in it, and it's almost like a, like a, <laughs> hear me out, it's almost like a, is it like a C major over an F sharp major? Both of those together? I mean, that's, it's a tritone, so it's a crunchy sound that would work really well. That kind of almost sounds like what that is. Now there's a chord change in there, and I think it's E major, but you wouldn't know it because it's, it, there's so much going on around it. Ooh, is that the same thing? I, I feel like it is something like that. But man, just the combination of all of these sounds, if that is, if we are just stacking triads essentially, I mean, what a beautiful sound in this context, because the whole thing, and this is, this is an important part about the Close Encounters theme as a whole, it's very much like climbing, 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 because not only is that a great way to build emotional development, it builds up to the climax of the piece, but it also represents going up into, uh, into the spaceship, which we see happen in the film. But then we get one of the coolest parts of this whole theme. Check this out. <laughs> this is literally When You Wish Upon a Star from Disney. Now that was included, pretty much just because Steven Spielberg wanted it included. And it was one of those things where it really made sense to use that song in particular here, just as like a theme to kind of remind us that, hey, this isn't necessarily scary. It's wondrous, right? It's it's very much like, wow, I mean, imagine being in this position, experiencing this for the first time. You're the first humans to make contact with another, with an alien species. And so obviously it's, Amazing, right? And they're peaceful, which is the whole idea. And one of the reasons that Steven Spielberg wanted to include it as well was to make sure that the aliens didn't come across as too scary. He wanted to remind people that this is a peaceful encounter and it's everyone's just kind of like amazed at what's going on. But what a brilliant inclusion and John Williams, leave it to John Williams to work it so perfectly into the score. And now, we go back to that theme and here's where we can Definitely here. Listen to the lowest note happening here. Each note is climbing. Ooh, that one's a beautiful one. Let's look at what's going on there. So right there, the first chord is E major seven. But you'll notice that the root is the fifth of that chord. It's B, right? And then here, this is, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. This is one of the reasons why I just, I feel like there's something special about this score, about John Williams' work on this film. It's just, mm, listen to this. That chord. C augmented. Sounds totally simple, but to, to follow, To follow an E major chord with that, I don't know. There's something special about it. And then to follow that. How is that voice? That's an A major chord. I, oh, it's, it's major seven. So we're using major seven chords here. E major seven, C augmented, A major seven with its third in the bass, C sharp. What's that? I think that's just B flat dominant over its third, D. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get another E major seven chord, but we're gonna use the major seventh of that chord as the root note. 
That is wild, right? Because it's a very dissonant chord, uh, uh, note to use as the root in comparison to the actual root of the chord. But because we're doing this, this chromatic walk-up, it just works so perfectly. We started on our, on B for E major, E major seven, C augmented, A major seven, B flat dominant, and then we get this E major seventh chord with the D sharp in the bass. It's just so brilliant. And then this chord, C augment, C dominant, C7 sharp five. Is that what that is? I think that might be what that is. If we just looked at what the chords actually were without the uh, clever root movement that John Williams is using here, we would just see an E major seven, I think that is a C chord. I think it's a C dominant with a sharp five. Listen here. Yeah, and then, there is the first glimpse of the famous line. Oh my God, this, wow. Now we're in B major. Now what's that? I think it's just a G dominant chord, but the melody is the minor third. The melody is B flat or A sharp. I'm really hearing that. Yeah, that's 100% it. What? What? Okay. That is such a beautiful sequence. We have like a B with a B major six. And then we keep our root. This is kind of a theme that we're using here. We're keeping that root right at B, right? And here we're gonna change from a B major to a, a B flat major chord over B still. Listen to that crunch. That's just like, whoa, right? Major seven. B augmented, and then there's our four. It kind of just turns into like a seven sharp 11 chord. And then B minor over its third. C sharp half diminished. Oh, and then D major all of a sudden. We get the build up, right? This is when the ship is raising up, taking off. stop um <laughs> we're playing in the key of g and we're ha we, we kind of have the implied uh, that it's just sort of staying right here even though we can hear that fourth is sneaking in there right so we know there's kind of a small harmonic shift here and we hear that once but then all of a sudden we hear There's very clearly a chord change to C major. Oh, 
There's our four. And then E minor 11. That's the chord there. And then we have this beautiful melodic, uh, you know, these inner melodic movements. And then uh, something like, oh man, as we go down to this C major, I think it's like a C, the melody's in F sharp, and we hear this inner voice movement in there, G sharp. And then it goes to like an F major seven before, Hitting our five chord. F. D. And then. Four. One, four. done yet because we get our same D chord again but now we go back to the B major melody listen to this thing develop there's our augmented chord B flat over B B major augmented and then there's our four oh, dominant sharp to E and then finally C sharp half diminished with this really long climb up as we ascend into the sky. B major, G major, back and forth between these two. And then finally, fades away into nothing as you would see the light fade away into the night sky. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. You know, one of the fascinating things is that although this and Star Wars were both space alien themed movies, they were obviously very, very different, but you can hear that in the scores because this score has such a wondrous type of like questioning feeling to it. It's the discovery of another species. Whereas in Star Wars, it's very battle. I mean, we're, we, we already exist in a world where we know that there's intergalactic species and we're sort of an intergalactic civilization all together, right? So it's not the, the same wondrousness of discovering or encountering life on this planet that's not from this planet. And this film really paints that picture of encountering that for the first time. And so it makes sense that the different scores between Star Wars and Close Encounters would be so different, where Star Wars being a much more triumphant, uh, you know, very battle, it has, it has its absolutely beautiful parts, as we know, we've looked at some of that in the past, but this film, there's a level of sophistication uh, about this score, and it might be, it might be, my favorite John Williams theme of all time. I'm so hesitant to actually put a label on it, but I wanna know your label. What's, what is your favorite John Williams theme of all time? And what's one that maybe I haven't looked at on this channel that you would like to see me do? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this score, if this is one of your favorites. As always, thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for uh, letting me kind of geek out over this for a few minutes. I appreciate your time and we will see you in the next one.